Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to start with a PSA. Uh, we at Hofstra are following New York State and CDC mask rules. So for those of you who are vaccinated, you can re remove your masks. For those who are not, we ask that you leave it on uh, during the course of the program. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is Alan Kelly, and I serve as Hofstra's Vice President for Development. And I'm very pleased uh, to welcome you all to this exciting event and exciting day at Hofstra. Uh, besides all of you, we, we do have a number of special guests with us today, including the Vice Chair of Hofstra's Board of Trustees, David Mack. <laughs> Eric Gertler, President and CEO of Empire State Development. Don Claven, supervisor of the town of Hempstead and a Hofstra alumnus. <laughs> Kevin Law, co-chair of the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council. <laughs> Councilwoman Dorothy Goosby. <laughs> Michael Lodato from the town of Hempstead Local Development Corporation. Carol Longworth, Executive Director of the Long Island Region for Empire State Development. Jack Schneerman, Comptroller, Nassau County. And Jeffrey Schoen, Deputy Comptroller and Hofstra Law School alum. And I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Senator Kevin Thomas' office and his representative here with us today. Thank you very much for being here. It's now my pleasure to introduce the president of Hofstra, Stuart Rabinowitz. Thank you very much, Alan, and thank all of you for joining us on what is um, truly a transformative day for Hofstra University. And uh, I am so pleased that my final groundbreaking, unless I can think of another building by July 31st, is this, and I might, but uh, is this one, because it, it breaks ground on Hofstra's newest classroom building, its state-of-the-art laboratory building, the Science and Innovation Center. And this will be a 75,000 square foot structure on our campus, which I feel appropriately signifies 20 years of spectacular growth at Hofstra in sciences, medicine, and healthcare. I want to begin by thanking our partner, New York State, uh, in making this a reality, allowing us to construct a center which will bring scholarship together with simulation and practical applications in engineering and applied sciences or computer sciences and nursing practice. This building has been designed as it should be with the students and faculty and the professions in mind, and giving them access to facilities and state-of-the-art equipment that will take learning to the next level and pre prepare professionals in advanced science and health professions meet the challenges of the next century. With, the part, with partners such as Governor Cuomo, Empire State Development Corp, represented by President and CEO Eric Gertler, who will speak in a moment. We are well positioned to move Hofstra University and the entire region ahead in terms of innovation and economic development. The $25 million grant, more than matched by $50 million from Hofstra, provided, but the $25 million grant provided through New York State was the necessary first step for today's groundbreaking to occur and is truly a transformative grant for Hostra and for Long Island. Projects of this scope and size and with this kind of ambition can only be realized with the support and leadership of every level of government. I've already mentioned the state, but I also have to give a shout out to the town of Hempstead, uh, especially my former law student who now races lobsters, but <laughs> supervisor Don Claven, and one of my favorite people on Long Island anywhere, Councilwoman Dorothy Goosby. They have made this building a priority for the town. 
And we are also indebted, literally, to the Tana Hempstead Local Development Corp uh, and their executive director, Fred Parola, couldn't be here today, I understand, but um, we're grateful uh, to them for their help. And lastly, even though Laura Curran is not here today, she's opening something in uh, Eisenhower Park, um, we're happy to work with her. She, she really has created a culture of partnership and development in Nassau County, and she understands the vital role of economic development and the importance of having public and private partnerships. And every step of the way, the REDC has been there for us. Co-chaired, I'm proud to say, by Kevin Law. I'll have something more to say about him. Good things in a minute. But also, I thank the members, the voluntary members and leaders of the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council, and particularly from ESD, Kara Longworth, who is the executive director of Long Island ESD. And by the way, she also uh, is a Hofstra Law School graduate. Um, Barry Greenspan, who helps us with the nitty gritty details, and the entire staff at Empire State Development. Now, just a personal privilege, uh, just a few kind words, because he always says nice things about me too, but um, about Kevin Law because Kevin has been an incredible leader for Long Island for more than a decade. He's a great friend, so I'm biased a little bit, but not too much. He is a great co-chair for the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council. And literally, it is due to Kevin's work with all of Long Island constituencies, businesses, government, developers, nonprofits, that Long Island has been a net winner in all of the competitive grant programs through the regional uh, economic development process. And he made this grant to us, this $25 million grant from Governor Cuomo, uh, possible, as he has for uh, countless transformative projects across Long Island and that have contributed to the region's culture of innovation and economic growth. And lastly, but certainly not least, uh, I want I want to thank the faculty and the deans who made all the detailed plans for this building. We build buildings to fit the academic needs, not vice versa. And we don't know what the academic needs are without the input of our faculty and our deans. And they were terrific uh, on this project. And I specifically want to thank and recognize publicly two of the deans involved. Uh, at some point, it felt like North and South Korea were negotiating for territory in the building, but it, it all worked out in the end, but they both were fabulous, and they both are incredibly ambitious, and that's exactly what you want uh, for a dean of an important school. I want to thank Dean Kathy Gallo, uh, and I want to thank Dean, uh, dean Sina Rabani. Thank you. This building actually represents their best thinking and their vision of what students need today and more importantly, what advanced learning looks like tomorrow in healthcare and engineering and computer science. And without that, we could not have had the architects and the planners make this building the wonderful reality that will be. And of course, overall, our partnership with the great health system, Northwell Health, has inspired so much of Hofstra's work over the last 12 to 14 years in healthcare education. And they have been an anchor uh, in the expansion that we have under, undergone. So um, I, I can't wait to see this building come to fruition. Uh, it, it will take the Dematis School of Engineering and Applied Sciences to new heights. It will certainly aid it in becoming a leading science institution in this region and beyond. Uh, they've already tripled their enrollment since they became a school less than a decade ago. And the center will also house much of Hofstra Northwell School of Nursing and Applied Sciences, including very odd looking 
simulation facilities where uh, we have mannequins or robots playing uh, as patients. And so we don't need insurance for that, but because uh, if they're hurt, they don't suit. But um, that nursing school has grown so exponentially in just a few years. Uh, it, we not only have a full nurse practitioner program, we now have a doctorate of nurse practitioner program, and just this coming fall, we will open an undergraduate nursing program, a BS in nur nursing RN, um, as well as other new programs. Kathy Gallo thinks of a new program every week, which is what a good dean does. So I thank you all for coming, and I now have the honor of inviting to the, po uh, the podium our partner, partner in this project, Empire State Development President and CEO, Eric Gart. Thank you, Stu. On behalf of Governor Cuomo, it is a pleasure to be here, and it's great to see you all in person. So uh, I, too, want to just recognize a number of local leaders before I begin. From the governor's office, I want to recognize Lisa Santaramo, um, who is just simply amazing, who just uh, is involved with every detail here on Long Island, and uh, it's been such a pleasure working with her. So, and of course. <laughs> She's going to get everyone jobs. Um, Andrew Mulvey, thank you. Um, ESD's Long Island Regional Director, Carol Longworth, who, as you all know, is a tireless advocate for ESD and state government and economic projects on the island. Thank you, Kara. Um, I also want to recognize Hofstra Trustee, David Mack. Uh, Town of Hempstead Supervisor, Don Clavin. Where's Don? Don, I also uh, would like to recognize Town of Hampstead Senior Councilwoman Dorothy Goods Goosby. Uh, and I too want to um, acknowledge uh, the doctor, Sina Narabini, Dean of the, uh, the School of Engineering and Applied Science, and of also Kathleen Gallo, the Dean of the Hostra Northwell School of Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. So, Thank you all. Projects like this require so many people. It requires collegiality. Uh, you've all been instrumental in helping to make sure this, this come forward. So thank you all. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't take a few minutes to uh, recognize Stu's upcoming retirement. Uh, you and Hofstra have been synonymous. For 20 years, you have done such great work as a president. Before that, of course, as a dean and a professor. And, of course, Hofstra has blossomed as Stu has gotten younger over the years. So, um, but in, serious, in all seriousness, you should be so proud of your accomplishments and how you've affected uh, decades of students as they've gone off into the real world. So, Stu, thank you for everything that, that, that you've done. Now, this uh, also means that uh, you may be retiring from the REDC, the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council. Um, and uh, as many of you know, he's been with us from the very beginning, an outstanding collaborator and leader uh, for over 10 years. And when Governor Cuomo took office, he had an innovative vision for economic development. And that strategy was a bottom-up approach as opposed to a one-size-fits-all. Uh, we know, certainly here, and you know, Long Islanders know best what Long Island needs. And so uh, he approached two of the best and most dedicated Long Islanders to help carry out his vision. And Stu, along with his co-conspirator, I'm sorry, I mean co-chair, Kevin Law, uh, and I want to acknowledge, Kevin, I think Stu said it best, you also have been a passionate, great leader for Long Island, and thank you for all you've done on the REDC for the last 10 years. But um, as you know, we designed the REDCs to integrate academia uh, and business um, so that the power of that integration would fully um, help uh, the region. And Stu and Kevin, have led the REDC through amazing years of expansion and growth 
um, and of course through uh, the challenging times of the last year. So uh, with that, let me just also thank Stu and Kevin on behalf of the governor for all the great work that you've done here in Long Island. So thank you both. Before COVID-19 dealt what we all know has been a devastating blow to New York State, we were experiencing one of the largest economic expansions in the state history. And that growth was particularly evident here on Long Island. Now, I had the, um, the privilege of being the captain of the control room, which the governor set up to help facilitate the reopening of the regions. Um, and I got to work with, uh, with Lisa and Kevin and Kara. Um, and that was uh, part of that, uh, our role was to help reopen the region after flattening the COVID-19 curve. Uh, and we have been laser focused on achieving the pre-pandemic baseline. Before COVID, the number of people with jobs was at record highs, and the unemployment rate was at its lowest in decades. Jobs being created here were in sectors that are in the businesses of tomorrow. In 2019, Governor Cuomo declared that Long Island can be the research triangle of tomorrow. Great research laboratories, great research facilities, state-of-the-art laboratories like world-class academic universities like Hofstra. These are the places that provided momentum for Long Island prior to the pandemic, and they will fuel our economy after COVID and beyond. Since 2011, New York State has invested more than $250 million in support for Long Island's innovation corridor. Under Governor Cuomo, besides here at Hofstra, New York State is advancing many other science-related projects in collaboration with the many academic institutions that are here. We know that New Yorkers work hard, but we also play we also play hard too. I'm also pleased to say that we are making tremendous progress and inching closer each day to seeing the Islanders play at their new UBS arena at Belmont Park. And I have to say, go Isles, as I was driving down here. Last night, as you all know, they beat that team from, uh, I think, Boston or something. So go Isles, it's just great. <laughs> Look, we know that this pandemic was not just the greatest public health crisis that we faced, but it also presented us with one of the worst economic crises too. But New York, in New York we reimagine, we rebuild, we think anew, and in, it is in that spirit that we gather here today. This new state-of-the-art facility, the future home for your programs, will address the growing demand for skilled graduates in the sciences, and healthcare to prepare New York State for the future, the future economy, and the future societal challenges and opportunities that will inevit inevitably occur. We can't control the future, but we can be prepared for it. Public investment represents Governor Cuomo's priorities, and New York, as Stu pointed out, has contributed $25 million through a capital grant and $2 million from the Regional Economic Development Council to this project. Investing in healthcare and the life sciences was a key strategy prior to the pandemic, and now, obviously, it is even more critical. New York's 27 million investment here in Hofstra on Long Island will address a growing need for engineers and graduates with advanced technical knowledge while providing advanced nursing students with simulation facilities and labs to provide a cutting edge learning environment. Another very exciting aspect of the project is integrating the Center for Entrepreneurship and Center for Innovation with the business community to incubate and accelerate startups and partner with entrepreneurs, further furthering economic growth in the region. We've been through so much over the last year and a half, and under the governor's leadership, we've now flattened the curve. We're seeing increased vaccinations lower infection rates, and more and more industries across the state that are opening. Today's milestone is just the latest step in our continued efforts to rebuild New York's economy back stronger, smarter, and better than before. 
And as you can see, the future is bright in Long Island. We continue to make smart investments in our region, and in spite of COVID, we are moving forward on Long Island and moving forward in New York State. So on behalf of Governor Cuomo and the administration, congratulations. I can't wait to see the great things that the next generation of skilled applied science, engineering, and nursing professionals will bring to this region. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I'd now like to ask our alum and the supervisor of the town of Hempstead, Don Clavin, to come forward for remarks. Just so you know, I did, for about 20 years, I was a receiver of taxes, and all I do is get booed. So really, it's a little bit of a just when people give me a round of applause every once in a while. I'm excited to be here, and I sort of have a speech, and I'm going to put it away, uh, because to me, this is exciting news. This is a real collaboration of, of Hastra, the state, the localities, the town, and working with my friends, and, and I call her my friend in government, Senior Councilwoman Goosby. I've always said, I can fight with anybody, but when people work together, they accomplish so many good things. And this is a good thing. You know, I'm proud alumni of this school. I've known uh, Stu, he gave me a beautiful C plus 30 years ago. I was really, you know, I don't want to say I'm holding a grudge, but, uh, you know, and, and I do appreciate your introduction. I do want to let you know that our favorite lobster in the race, uh, Blue Tail Stew, is going to come in last. But uh, this is really important work. And the last year says it all. You know, look at what we've gone through the last year with this pandemic. You know, healthcare, doctors, nurses are needed so much. The technology, uh, and to partner with all of you uh, is really, to, it's an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Uh, and to, to Kevin, you know what? Thank you for your, for your friendship. We've become fast friends, and, and I, we talk every Friday at 1 o'clock, and, and not against you, but he tells me my meetings are much more fun than those calls you guys did on a daily basis with the state. And, and for Stu, for your passion for this institution, for, for your leadership, you've done so much. All joking aside, you know what? Look back, and you have so much to really be very, very proud of, and, and, and what a final milestone. Um, and I love the fact that you, you do it the right way. You acknowledge all the people and their passions of my two deans that were fighting over the space in the room. I think it's wonderful. And to be part of this, really, it's very, very humbling. But again, I think a great lesson is there is a real need for this. There is a tremendous need for this. This institution is the shining star of education on Long Island. I really feel that way. Not just because I went here. I've seen this grow. I've seen it grow from Maria Regina when I went to high school down the road to what you're doing now. And this is a feat. And this speaks volumes of what the focus of this institution represents on Long Island. So on behalf of the senior councilwoman, I thank you for allowing us to partner up with you. Thank you to our friends in the state. Thank you to our friends in the county. And as I said, when people work together, great things can happen. This is a great thing. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you, Don. And now I'd like to in introduce the co-chair of the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council, Kevin Law. Doesn't it feel great to be outdoors and together again and we're not looking at everybody on the screen? This is amazing. Um, really happy to be here. Uh, thank you so much. I'm told I'm bad in cleanup, so let me start and I'll try to be brief. Um, very excited to be here and Stu, I'm saving you for last. Uh, so first, um, I also want to thank uh, Governor Cuomo. It was Governor Cuomo, if not for him, we wouldn't be here today uh, uh, because we were able to secure a large pot of money for a lot of important projects for Long Island. And he said it wanted, he wanted it to be transformative and he bought into the whole concept of a research corridor on Long Island that stretches from Brookhaven National Lab into, through Suffolk into Nassau, here at Hofstra and Northwell, and ultimately into Manhattan. Uh, because we do have some of the finest research uh, institutions and academic institutions here on Long Island and Hofstra certainly at the top. And, um, and so uh, this 
the funding, the primary funding uh, for this project came out of that uh, project, uh, that pot of money, and uh, it was because of uh, Governor Cuomo. And there's something else Governor Cuomo did, and people don't realize this. How many people are excited about the Islanders playing their games at the barn, the Nassau Coliseum? Well, that wouldn't have happened either if it wasn't for Governor Cuomo because the Coliseum needed some upgrades to meet the NHL standards to continue to allow the Islanders to play at the Coliseum. And we were able, with the governor's help, to take some monies out of that same pot of money that is funding this new engineering and applied sciences building to do those upgrades at the Coliseum which is allowing the Islanders to be playing all of their home games here in the town of Hempstead and not in Brooklyn. So I think we should give Governor Cuomo a big round of applause for the Islanders. <laughs> Eric Gertler uh, has done a great job as uh, the head, the president and CEO of ESD. I've been in and out of the public sector and the private sector for the last 30 years. Eric is one of the nicest and smartest guys I've ever met in government. And we thank him for the terrific job he did at ESD. So let's give Eric a round of applause. As Don Clavin said, we have become fast friends. We didn't know each other uh, two years ago. And we have become great friends. We uh, talk often. Um, we work together, we try to strategize and collaborate on moving things forward in this town. He is a terrific leader of the largest town in America here uh, in Hempstead, and I'm really optimistic of some exciting additional projects happening here in the town of Hempstead because of Don Clavin's leadership. So Don, thank you for your leadership and your friendship. And my dear friend, who I haven't seen in 15 months, and my other co-chair, um, of something else that his County Executive Laura Curran put me on, and that was the Nassau Coliseum Hub Advisory Committee. Senior Councilwoman Dorothy Goosby and I have co-chaired this committee, a working group, to work with the community to work on some of community benefit packages for the ultimate development that happens at the Hub. And Dorothy, it's so great to see you, and this wouldn't be happening those things wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for you. So thank you for everything. Round of applause to Dorothy Guzman. And then finally, let me go to page 13 of my notes here. Um, Stu Rabinowitz. Stu, uh, you know, it's, it's been said, he's just done an amazing job from a really a local college, even just like a, not even a Long Island college, it was a Nassau County college. He then made it into his regional college, and then this statewide college, and now it's a national and internationally known college that all happened under his watch. He's done an amazing job here, and in addition to the, all the great things he's done in Hofstra, I've had the pleasure of serving with Stu on a number of uh, entities. So first, Stu was on my board at the LIA for the last 10 years, and so we worked together there. And then um, Governor Cuomo asked us both to be on a uh, casino location board for the identification of casinos in upstate New York. And we did a great job. We worked real hard, but had a lot of fun. And we learned something that we, neither of us had any knowledge of uh, before. But we became very um, uh, close uh, there. But it was really through the REDC for the last 10 years, as Stu and I have co-chaired it, um, we have really, you know, uh, worked hard to try to, you know, uh, bring the island together because Long Island doesn't really work together that well. It takes a lot of work to work together and it takes an effort. Uh, but uh, we were able to do that with a great team, the ESD staff, all the people uh, at the Hofstra team who has helped uh, us uh, look good. Um, but Stu and I, uh, had a lot of fun doing that, but what I have said, and a lot of people don't know, is that over the last 10 years, Stu has become one of my best friends. And I am going to miss working with him day to day, but we agreed, we just had lunch the other day, 
we're going to continue to do things together. And so uh, I look forward to that. So Stu, thank you for everything you've done. God bless you. Thank you all. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, just a few more acknowledgments uh, before we proceed to the next part of the agenda. I just want to recognize some of our alumni leaders here today. Uh, Jim Nolan, co-chair of the Engineering Advisory Board, is with us. Thanks, Jim. Hillary Needle, the president of the alumni organization, is with us today. And I also, we're very fortunate to have great partners uh, for the planning, architecture, and engineering of uh, this new building. Just want to acknowledge uh, John Gehring from HLW, John Cameron, John Cameron from Cameron Engineering, and our alum, Jim Donahue from Structure Tone. Thank you all very much for being here.